Hello, people. How are you? I hope uh, every one of you is doing fine. You're staying healthy. And uh, let's just keep fighting the good fight. And today's episode, I'm going to be uh, showing you a little bit of my Webpack uh, setup and how everything is set up on my projects with Webpack. To give you a little bit of a background and how I started and why I started using Webpack, uh, I've been using Laravel for, uh, I can say, about six years or so. And at one point, I, I believe Laravel Mix um, was uh, using Webpack 3. And I wanted to use some of the options that Webpack 4 was offering. And I was looking at the website and it was looking good. And like they had all these new stuff that made um, everything just build faster. I build uh, apps as well as websites. And some of the websites, they do need to be fast, you know, load fast when you are uh, in production or when you actually publish the website to the world. And there were things there that uh, Webpack 4 didn't offer. So I, I went to Laravel Mix, I started playing with it and I started changing the configuration. And uh, first, let me say Laravel Mix is awesome. If you like Laravel Mix and you're already using it and you don't see a reason why to change, then by all means, just stay with it. It's, I mean, it, it's a great job just done by Jeffrey Way. And uh, um, I mean, like they took it to another level. It's an abstraction layer with basically it abstracts a lot of the things that you would do with Webpack and in two lines, you know, which is amazing. Um, you can still add a lot of the options and it's, it has very good documentation as well as a lot of people using it. But going back to why I started using Webpack is for a certain amount of time, they didn't have uh, Webpack 4. Uh, I believe they did it, I don't know, months after Webpack 4 actually came out. They actually had compatibility with Webpack. So that kind of made me think about it. And I was in a, in a place where I was like, first of all, I like to understand how things work. Uh, I believe that just using them is not enough. Also, understanding what's behind everything, what's underneath, it's important because then you know exactly what you're working with and how you can work with it and if you can make changes or not. So I started diving deep into Laravel Mix and how it was coded and a little bit of Webpack as well. And yeah, like it just got to a point where I was like, you know what, let me just start using Webpack. So it took me a while, honestly, <laughs> guilty as charged. And I finally got the hang of it. And uh, I wanna start out and this is the reason why I'm here in Webpack's main uh, documentation page is because they have all kinds of documentation for it right on their website. I mean, they, this, these guys and gals, they really did an amazing job just having everything together as far as what you are going to need, uh, to get started. And I mean, there are plugins, there are, uh, support. You can ask people on stack overflow and GitHub everywhere. Uh, I love it, honestly. So I started going through the documentation and looking at some of the configurations and how you do them. And eventually I came out with um, the setup that I've been using for quite some time now. So like for uh, I'll say about three years, I've been using this setup. I don't use Laravel Mix. Uh, I only use Webpack and here is the Laravel Mix uh, code base. So I was going over it a little bit. Uh, but today we're going to go right into Webpack. So this is just something I was working on. Let me take you right into my Webpack config file. So if you look at it, instead of having a Laravel mix file, I have a webpack.config.js file. I'm going to post this in my blog so you can see it. And I'm going to give you an example of what I use so you can just copy and use it and then make some changes to and tweaks to whatever you need. And also I'm going to show you Webpack mix and exactly how, where that is. So it's like, this is another project. Let me close this project so I don't get confused. Um, yeah, playground. This is the same playground we've been playing with all along and you know, all the rest of the videos. And here it is. So you have webpack, yarn, error, and yarn lock. And somewhere in there, there's, there's more. Yep. So yarn, webpack, history right here pretty much uh, build your assets um, and package lock and package JSON so this this files also is pretty much with what's building all your front-end assets all right 
So this is how you use Webpack uh, Laravel Mix. And I've been complaining about in my previous videos about uh, how slow it is. Maybe I'm not using it right, um, or maybe I'm too used to using just Webpack. Uh, it, I don't think it's Laravel Mix itself. I think it's Yarn. But honestly, if you know, leave a comment and let me know. So here it is. Uh, the file so as you see in the project I don't have a Laravel mix file I just have a webpack file and in this setup I have uh, two different uh, setups so, so one is for a front end and then another one's for a back end the reason for that is because this is like a CMS application and it's actually a CMS application and uh, there is a front end and there is a back end and there's different ways that I'm building stuff for each one of them but I'm gonna walk you through the front end of it and basically this is exactly how you can do it you will start out over here front end constant front end is equals to a function that contains the environment and this is an anonymous function call and this environment right here I believe it's coming from one of the dependencies in the environment so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check if this is a production environment and then if it is, I'm going to run some of the production uh, code or how I'm going to run it in production. If it's not, I'm going to run it how it's going to run in development. Some reasons for that is uh, in development, uh, you can see the view, in this case, view um, builder tools or React uh, uh, developer tools. Uh, and it's not minimized. It doesn't have any of the optimizations done. Uh, as if you were to run it in production where it's all minimized, it's all optimized, it's all ready to go uh, for you. So it's more, and also uh, if you, for example, run watch, like there are things that it does behind the scenes in development mode where it it's faster when you are building your app, you know. So when you are parsing and you are building your app and you have the watch on, like it just makes it faster for you to get working faster on that and let's keep walking through it so i want to show you how my package json is set up so if you look at this it's pretty simple i have a test dev staging watch and prod so each one of these runs webpack and if you see this is the environment that i'm running that i'm passing over in the function and this is in production this is in local this is staging this is local again but this one has watch so the difference between dev and watch is that this one already has watch on it and that's why i wanted to show you this so if you go back you get a better understanding of what's what's going on there is the watch false and these are all options that you can look at the webpack um website and it's just going to give you all these options and then it gives you like some watch options so i can pass the watch options how I want it. I pass 300 milliseconds and polling every one second and it ignores the node modules that way it's not running into a million dependencies and it just gets slower obviously. Uh, here is my optimization. I am using a hashed file so it basically adds a hash to the file and I don't know if you've noticed when you go and run a website on um, page speed or pingdom tools or GT metrics and it tells you hey you need to add a hash to your file. This is what this is. So basically, it's just making uh, it faster um, when it goes once it goes over there. Uh, it minimizes only if it's in production. It concatenates only if it's in production. The runtime chunks run in a single, so so it's like single blocks of it, uh, and the split chunks. So these are all options that if you start reading more on Webpack documentation, I believe if you go to uh here and then you find or somewhere let me search for it so chunks split chunk plugin so the split chunk plugin has all the different setups that you can do for that and it explains everything and how like what's the default and what you can change the values to it has a bunch of information in it so i honestly don't go over it every single day i did this once for like weeks I got my setup and that's the same setup I use sometimes I do uh, tweaks here and there and that's pretty much how it is so that's the split chunks and that's how you can pass some options into that plugin right here um, also by the way webpack uh, 5 it's coming out pretty soon they're already in beta 
So I want to jump right into it instead of just using Webpack 4. I want to jump right into Webpack 5. Since I'm just using pure Webpack, I'm not going to have the same problem I had before where I had to wait till Laravel Mix changed to Webpack 4 from Webpack 3. It's just I'm using Webpack already, so I can just go roll with it. I actually could do that right now, but it's in beta, so maybe I'll do that on a back end, not in the front end. And that's another reason why I have these separated. So here is my entry point. And if you go to the Webpack configuration or the documentation, rather, you can see. Um, so, so there's the entry, you know, the entry point for it. So this is how you can do it. You can do for like home, about, contact for each single page. You can do a different entry point. I just do it for the entire project. Maybe one day I'll get more nitpicky with it and just use smaller files. The smaller your files, the smaller the load, the faster your website's gonna be good for SEO, good for people saying on your website, the feel of it and all that. So here's the file that I'm running. As you see, this is a CMS, like I was saying. So it's a default theme and it's running into the files and it's running this front.js file. So if you go and look at, let's go and look at that file. It's just very simple. Right now, I haven't done a lot. Maybe I'll show you the backend one so you can get a better idea of, of uh, how that looks like oh, actually that's one of the chunk files I'll get to it uh, once I go into the back and actually I can go that down right here and let's go into that I believe will be public right there so here is uh, some of the files and how I'm doing it you may wonder why am I using require so this basically is like an async to load uh, functionality where if you put it like this you can make it resolve and then require you can pass an array of the, the uh, components you require and then resolve it pass the result right into the require JS what it does is it, it starts chunking all of this and it only loads it when you need it uh, again that's more optimization and if you notice I do it for the global components as well as for the components in the view instance in this case so the front end doesn't have that much just the burger which is that burger toggle uh, for the menu. I'm working on that. I'll show you once it's done. Um, so going back to the Webpack file, we are right over here, the entry point. Now the output, that's where uh, this is gonna output. And there's two things. You need the path and you need the public path, which is just basically the URL that it's gonna use. And then the file name, it's basically, um, uh, how you want to name the file you can customize this in this case I'm using the name which in this case translates to whatever this is so it'll be frontend.hash.js and if you go if we go and find that frontend file you're gonna see that it's hashed you see so it's frontend.93 blah 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 and then .js that's basically the hash file this is what it looks like once it's built so you look at this is basically a map of each one Okay, uh, and then obviously this is where where in the public path it's gonna be, where in the path it's gonna be. This is where in the URL it's gonna be, and I'm using path, the path plugin or the path uh, library, and resolving that so I can get an accurate um, uh, point of of where this is, passing the directory name and public, and then mapping this exactly to where it is. Uh, resolve. So here are some of the options that you have for resolving uh, Vue.js. Uh, in this case, I'm resolving Vue. It's, it's doing this uh, Vue.js plugin, obviously. And then the extensions are going to be this, 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 and that. So if we go to resolve, it should give us a little bit of a better understanding, better description than what I'm giving you. So basically, it says these options change how modules are resolved. Webpack provides reasonable default this defaults but it is possible to change the resolving in detail. Have a look at module resolution for more explanation. So I gotta honestly go a little bit more about this. It looks very interesting, but basically it's just how it, it resolves your, your plugins and your, your code and what you're calling into Webpack. 